Hello, welcome to our service of the Eucharist for Sunday the 31st of January. Today we are celebrating the presentation of Christ in the Temple or Candlemas and so we have a slightly different order of service than that we have been used to. I hope you have a candle to hand and something to light it with later um, because we will come to that at the end of the service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to his Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified, as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. In this Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. So let us continue that celebration by saying together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray that we may know and share the light of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel. Make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. And now we have our gospel reading and sermon. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice, according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what he was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, 
so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And that I may speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, when a child is born, of, people often ask the parents about the gender, the gender, the length, the weight of the baby, but also about the name that mum and dad had chosen for their child. It is an important decision what name the newly born will carry through life. My parents, as you know, had chosen Erwin as my Christian name. I liked the name and I liked it even more when I discovered that the ending, Win, such as in Edwin or Elwin, and also in Erwin, means friend. Did my parents think the choice of my name really through and had they chosen a name that means the promise of a person who will be a friend to many? I have to admit that the magic of my name vanished when one day my parents told me I was named after one of the characters of a popular television program. Anyway, a name remains important. And, a biblic and in biblical times, the meaning of a name was even more important than nowadays. Today we meet Simeon and Anna in the temple. Simeon is an old man who had been longing for decades for the fulfillment of God's promise of salvation. He is convinced of the imminence of this fulfillment. He believes that God will fulfill his promise because God cares for his people and listens to their cry. And Simeon must have remembered the meaning of his own name, as it means God has listened. When he holds Jesus in his arms, he trusts that through this child, salvation will break through. He may have asked Mary and Joseph what name they had chosen, and when they told him their child is named Jesus, he must have remembered that this name means God saves. Suddenly things seem to come together. This child, this name, and Simeon's openness to the Spirit tells him that God's promise of a Saviour is finally fulfilled. And this promise is for all people. Jesus is the long-awaited saviour, not just for those who are chosen, but for all, for Jews and Gentiles, for all the nations. Through Jesus, all peoples are heirs of God's promise. And then Anna appears. She confirms what Simeon just experienced. God's promise of a saviour for all is fulfilled in Jesus. And like Simeon, she has been looking forward to this day. She is the embodiment of waiting for the Saviour. She has been very patient in her waiting. And in this way, she honours her name, Anna, which means grace or finding favour with God and people. 
The meaning of the names of Simeon, Anna and Jesus all points in the direction of the fulfillment of God's promise of a saviour who saves us from sin and death and whose light shines for Jews and Gentiles. We also have a name and some of you may know its meaning, which may or may not have a deep significance. Whatever the name you received from your parents, your name has a great resonance with God. But it doesn't end here, because God gives us also a middle name that we bear alongside our human name. It is the name of Christ. Our identity is in Christ, and bearing the name of Christ means that we have the potential to live in the likeness of Jesus in love and with compassion for all people. This week, the harsh reality of the COVID crisis has hit us severely at the news of the symbolic figure of 100,000 deaths in Britain. By now, we all know people who have been ill with the virus or you have been ill yourself and some of you have lost a relative or a friend. We suffer and mourn as a nation and as individuals. And with us, God suffers in the same way he suffered when he saw his son being led to be tortured and crucified. God knows our pain, but he will never allow suffering and death to be the last we can say about a loved one. We can honestly trust that through Christ he restores our lives and fulfills the promise of a light to lighten the Gentiles. With Simeon, we may say that our own eyes have seen the salvation in Christ. Amen. And in response, we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we continue with our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God of love, your faithful servants, Simeon and Anna, watched in hope for the fulfilment of your promises. Give to the church that same patience and trust, especially at this time when the future looks dark and bleak. Be light in our darkness, O Lord. 
Help us to be beacons of light for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, Simeon spoke of your son as a sign that will be opposed. Preserve all in power from the arrogance that creates division and strife. Give wisdom and understanding so that those responsible for the welfare of others may make good decisions. Give us all a true sense of community that we may care for one another and work towards a fairer society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, Mary and Joseph made the customary offering for their firstborn. Be with all new parents as they care for and nurture their children and bless the work of all who give support with parenting. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, we remember our sisters and brothers in Uganda and pray that they may have the resources they need to cope with the ravages of the pandemic. Give them a deep assurance of your presence with them and help them know that they are loved and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, Simeon spoke of the sword that would pierce Mary's soul. Hear the cries of anguish and desperation that come from those who watch and wait by the side of those in distress and serious illness. The hospital staff caring for the sick and the families who are unable to be with loved ones at a time of crisis. We remember also people suffering from illnesses other than COVID-19 whose treatment is delayed. Comfort them in their anxiety with the light of your presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, Anna spoke to all who looked for redemption. Hear our prayer for all who have died. Shine into the darkness of death and grief your light of hope and comfort all who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, we thank you for the wisdom and skill of scientists that has enabled a vaccine against the coronavirus to be developed in record time. Give to all in authority grace and skill to ensure that it is distributed fairly without fear or favour. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, we know that you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. We thank you for the many blessings that you shower upon us each and every day. And rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we, as we come to the time of the prayers of penitence. Hear the words of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image within us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, 
have mercy upon me, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we come to the peace today. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace, perhaps by typing it into Facebook, by sharing with anyone who you are with at the moment. Father, in Christ there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept these gifts which we bring before you and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you through, from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of, fle of our flesh to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendour. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and the sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name that we too have seen your salvation and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread and gave, it to, and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood for the, of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Accept 
through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So believing in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. So these are God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so before I receive, we say a prayer of spiritual communion for all who, all you that are at home who are part of this service, who are part of this celebration, but cannot receive in person. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We end our service today slightly differently with lighting of candles. This is after all candle mass. And I think there is something really significant here that although we are not in church or temple as Anna and Simeon were, we can make our homes holy by prayers and actions. We can create a sacred space when we recognise Jesus and invite him into the very daily routine that we live. And I think at the end of this service, our final responses will help us find our direction for the weeks to come. So I hope you have your candle to hand. Please join with me in saying the Nunc Dimittis, those words of Simeon as we light our candles. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the, which you, thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I hope your candle lit a little bit more easily than mine did. So we come to the end of our service with our final words of response. The response to the first selection is, praise to Christ our light. And then we say, let us shine with the light of your love. I think the words will be on the screen. Father, we have sung your praise with shepherds and angels. May Christ be born in our hearts today. Praise to Christ our light. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us, like them, to trust your word. Praise to Christ our light. We have greeted Jesus, the light of the world. May we be filled with the light of your love. Praise to Christ our light. We call to mind the place of new birth. Let us shine with the light of your love. We turn from the crib to the cross. Let us shine with the light of your love. We go to carry his light. Let us shine with the light of your love. Thanks be to God. Thank you everybody for joining us today for our Sunday worship, whether you're watching at the premiere time or catching up with us later. I pray that whatever happens for your rest of your Sunday, that you have a blessed day and that you are able to really carry that light and that hope for the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs>